Who was the very first person to ever voice Spider-Ham? Don't trust the internet. Well, I mean, trust this video, which is on the internet, because uh, I'm going to tell you. Hey, Chris Baker here. As someone who's been a big fan of Spider-Ham since he was a comic book character in the 1980s, I was absolutely thrilled to see him get his proper due recently in Into the Spider-Verse. I was also fortunate enough to have worked on Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, which was Spider-Ham's grand debut outside of the pages of comics into a video game. If you don't recall, he's referenced at the beginning of the game. Is that a cartoon pig? And a post credit sequence actually includes a 3D model of him interacting with Madam Web. So, <laughs> what I miss? What the? Nuff said, kids. Nuff said. But who voiced him here? The role is not credited. And for the past eight years, it seems that fans have just been making educated guesses on who it could be. To the point that some of these guesses are actually reported as fact. To answer the question once and for all, I decided to call upon Kevin Umbricht, who was an associate producer on Shattered Dimensions at the time. Uh, so yes, you were in the booth. I was in the booth, literally and figuratively. Yes, and I've seen a lot of things over the years crediting who actually did Spider-Ham in that game. Who yeah, I'd, li I'd like to run through a few names and you can confirm or deny these names as we go. Mm -hmm. So, uh, first of all, uh, for a while, not right now, but for a while uh, on IMDb, Tom DeFalco, the creator of Spider-Ham, was credited as being the voice, which would have been cool. That, that would have been cool. But yeah, not, not the, the case. case. No, all right. I was not uh, involved in any aspect of uh, Shadow Dimensions. Okay, cool. So there were early rumors that suggested Ryan Drummond, who is best known as the voice of Sonic from uh, the Dreamcast era, so like Sonic Adventure and that sort of thing, who actually kind of sounds like our Spider-Ham. Right. He wasn't. Uh, he also was not a voice actor uh, for any aspect of, of the game. Hey, what's happening here? Okay, cool. So he himself has actually denied it as well. So we can absolutely <laughs> cross him off the list. Even the one person who gets credited the most, mm -hmm. and I'm not really sure why, is uh, an actor named uh, Chris Edgerly. Uh, and he's done uh, VO for some Activision games, like he was Gambit in X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, well, another Marvel game that Activision did not do was uh, The Incredible Hulk, and he was the lower mouth of Bybeast which uh, I thought was amusing. Uh, so, and he was additional, he's credited on many sites as Spider-Ham and additional voices on uh, Shattered Dimensions. So is it Chris Edgerly? Uh, is not, but and he was a voice actor in the game. So okay. a lot of these guys come in, um, if they're not cast as like a main role, um, voice actors can do up to three different voices per VO session for right. a project. I don't know if it's all projects, but it, this is how it was for video games when we were filming this, or uh, filming, when we were making uh, the game and recording. But um, so these guys are like scientist number two or thug, sure. like noir thug number three. So <laughs> was on the shoot, uh, he was on the cast list um, okay. along with another, a, a bunch of like prolific voiceover actors. Uh, who just came in for like an hour session, did the three voices, and and was out. But he is not Spider-Man. Not if my skull brother has anything to say about it. Someone, if you do additional voices on a game, you probably don't even remember every single voice you did. So, it's like, possible. if some if someone wants to credit you with something, it's like maybe I did that. I don't, you know, like. I, I don't. I'm not going to fault the guy in any way whatsoever. No, no, that. absolutely not. It's yeah. It's, so we had to initially submit the IMDb list from the production standpoint of everyone that was in there. And we had to have official records of it um, via Activision or I think Binox may have done it, the, uh, the developer of the game. Um, yeah. So at some point, someone changed that. Okay. Um, to add him in there because that wasn't an official thing on the IMDb page that some a representative of Activision or Binox uh, did themselves. So okay. somewhere... <laughs> Fan, someone had the authority to to change that. I saw on the listing that it says Spider-Ham slash additional voices. Right. 
Interesting. Okay. So, uh, you know, there were other prominent voice actors who might have stepped in for a bit. You know, we had Christopher Daniel Barnes. Nope. Not no him. Patrick Harris. Was supposed to be him. But That's, isn't. <laughs> Josh Keaton. Nope. John DiMaggio. No, his voice is way lower. There's yeah. No... Yeah. That'd be interesting, though, wouldn't it? Uh, Nolan North. A uh, good guess, because he can do pretty much any voice, but nope, not in this case. All right. Who is it, then? Me. Kevin Umber. No! Associate producer. Shocking! Acting. A, so a shocking development. 2011, yeah. <laughs> Tell me, Kevin Umbrook, you are a producer. What were you doing as the voice of Spider-Ham? How does that happen? Okay, so I was in all the VO sessions, um... I had been working directly with the writers and I was so familiar with the game and the stages where the VO would be. So um, Jamie Thomason was the VO director uh, and dialogue director and we worked at a studio and I was sort of the right hand man to say, well, in this scene, they're in a giant cavern. So we need to yell a little bit more to hear the player or right. he just hit in the face with a, you know, iron bar or something, you know, like, all the little nuances of knowing the game you have to bring to the um, to the production that someone reading a script or the VO director might not know. So right. I'm, and you were basically an, an assistant VO director at that point, right? Like yeah, helping kind of, I mean, in an yeah. unofficial capacity. I, I, you know, I, I chime in when needed and help out and say, "Hey, this is kind of what dev team thinks the character should be like or sound like." Here are pictures. I would hold up pictures and show footage to the actors of their characters in motion so that they can understand like the weight and how big they are and what they're supposed to be. Cool. Cool. So, uh, so right. how exactly did it happen that you became the voice? Okay. So nobody knew the character and I grew up with the character. So I kind of went, we were waiting for one of Neil Patrick Harris's sessions and he was supposed to also do that character as a little gag at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were testing the mics, setting up, and I did a scratch VO track of kind of what I thought the characters should, should sound like so we can get the levels right. Cause it was, you know, more of a high pitch cartoony voice than sure. he had done. So they just wanted to make sure everything was right. So I did the lines, uh, we did the session with Neil and it wasn't quite right. Everyone was like, uh, you know, it sounds a little bit too much like him and, not enough like its own individual character. So uh, we ended up just taking the scratch track. I think I did a slight overdub and they pitch shifted it up slightly. And that's, that's how it got in there. So you're saying that you are a more accomplished Spider-Ham voice actor than Neil Patrick Harris. I'm just saying <laughs> that I am the voice of record. I mean, it's debatable. Someone All else right. loved his performance. We there uh, thought, you know, this one was just more accurate to the way the character was represented and looked. And, you know, I am I am half the magician, half the actor that Neil is. And so I, I'm not even compare myself to that. <laughs> so it's been uh, eight years and you've been uncredited basically this entire time. Well, I credited myself on IMDb when I found out that somebody took credit for it or I see for it. And I couldn't erase the previous credit because I wasn't at Activision at the time, but somehow mm -hmm. I was able to add myself in there because I had already had an IMDb page and am a I guess official actor in different capacities for different projects. But so I was able to add it and no one denied it so yeah you were in a funny or die uh, gi joe video right yeah yeah right yeah that was very popular what 2009 about yeah right yeah cool cool right before the uh the movie came out the first movie right probably better than the movie <laughs> i think so but <laughs> so you know i'm sure there's some people who are still doubting it you know a lot of stuff happens in a sound boot or or during the the processing uh, of a voice like you don't necessarily sound like yourself afterwards but you're still gonna sound a little like yourself can you give us a little spider ham a little all right so i listened to it last night and i will try <laughs> and replicate as best i could at least one of the lines let's see all right, all right. 
and get into the bigger than nose. Yeah, you gotta get the nose right. Jumps in. So <laughs> what I miss? Something wasn't it? Or it was like then it's like enough said, kids. Enough right. said. Enough said, kids. Enough said. Perfect. There's no <laughs> doubt now in anywhere. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So now that that's established, I think it's really cool that you yourself are a fan of the character and. Yeah. Can you speak to that much at all? Sure, sure. So, what, it came out in 84, 83? I think Marvel Tales came out in 83, and then uh, the series came out in 84. But I was a, a comic, I was a Marvel fan, basically strictly Marvel. Um, and I had been buying Spider Man um, issues uh, of the different series at the time, because it was like Peter Parker and uh, Amazing. Uh, this was before, I think, Web. Um, but, uh, so uh, I had been collecting issues here and there and watching Spider-Man as Amazing Friends, so I was familiar with the Marvel Universe. But Spider-Ham was one of the first series that I started from issue number one. So that wow. was like a big deal. It was like, okay, this, I'm, I'm buying an issue number one. These things are worth a ton of money <laughs> someday. Uh, and I just fell in love. Like the parody aspect was so cool. It was like Mad Magazine for comics fans. Um, and I just love that it took itself really seriously. Like it wasn't super ridiculous and Looney Tunes, uh, which is interesting that the movie, the end of the spider verse kind of went that direction. Yeah. Um, it was like its own real stories with the parody characters of other characters that you liked. And it was, the tone was great and fun. I love the artwork and I just sort of fell in love and I got the whole series and I switched over to Marvel tales when it moved into that and I have, I think, almost every issue. I have a couple that I've missed um, and just kind of should find to complete the collection, but I just, you know, haven't over the years. Um, cool. And I buy whatever merch is available. So I have the statue that you had <laughs> or have in various. Yes, uh, yes. I have a piece of original, uh, a page, original page that I found at Comic Con one year. Um, Do you remember who tipped you off to that original page? Hmm. Could it have been you? <laughs> I'm see. sure it's gone up in value. Uh, you know, now that he's a mainstream movie character in the number one movie in America. Yeah, and it's got a Punisher um, slash Wilson Fisk. Uh, yeah, the Pun Fisher, right? Pun Fisher, which yes, yeah. <laughs> not one of the better ones. Uh, yes, not one of the better yeah. ones. Uh, the King Pig was in the first, uh, uh, you know, Spider Ham, I think it's number 12, the one where he's on the cover giving a big thumbs up that I put at the end of all my videos. Uh, he, uh, that was the first like spider related issue I ever bought with my own money, like spider mm -hmm. anything. So uh, that has like a special place in my heart. And yeah, that was the story. It was the story of the King Pig in that one. I mean, um, King Pig's good. That's a good one. It's, it is a good one. Um, yeah. Fisher, eh, that's, yeah. That's, that's great. Oh, but uh, so, yeah, so we've seen Spider-Verse now into the Spider-Verse. So what are your thoughts as a long time Spider-Ham character or our well, fan? I thought it was actually really good and I like the take on it. Um, it didn't detract from the movies. I was a little worried that all like Noir and, and, um, and Gwen to a, a lesser extent would uh, be distracting that they try and put too much of them in and make sense of the other, you know, other dimensions. But ultimately it was a story about Miles and Peter, which was yeah. awesome and it was good flavor. And they did go super Looney Tunes cartoon, which was fun. You know? I think it worked. I think it worked really well, actually. You know, I've seen a lot of people online saying like, you know, they should just do like spider ham shorts before uh, be Spider-Man movies. Yeah. I, I think that's a great idea and I hope they take that to heart. And uh, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of John Mulaney's comedy in general, but I thought he did a really good job. So I was worried and then pleasantly surprised. So it was, it was fun. Uh, there was one disturbing scene though. I don't know if you caught it. He's eating a hot dog at one point and yeah. I didn't catch what was in the background. Maybe it said veggie dogs or something, but like that one was a little weird of like cannibalistic. Yeah, apparently that's like a running gag in the modern Spider-Ham comics uh, uh, that he eats hot dogs. 
So, uh, so yeah, it is a little disturbing. Yeah. Um, and he, he does look, he does look different too. He's a different looking spider ham than we grew up with. Very porky pig instead yeah. of, uh, uh, cause, uh, I have another little anecdote of spider ham. We actually tried to get him to be one of the, uh, suits in oh. the game we did after that, which was at the time. Uh, time. Uh, and we did all of these designs for it, but we couldn't get the, because of the proportions of the character, uh, we couldn't get it to work in game because of the hitbox and the collision of the smaller character. So the, the <laughs> Beanox at one point tried to stretch out Spider Ham to the proportions of like a normal. It's not going to work. It was real weird. Yeah, it just didn't yeah. work. I do remember that it, it, it's an Easter egg. You guys put him in the game. You can find him. Yes. He's and just... it's a different model than the Shattered Dimensions one, which I thought was just odd that you guys would go to that Shattered extent. Shattered Dimensions one was done by the uh, CG studio. It wasn't the game hmm. model. It was built independently. Um, same with Madam Web. Madam Web's not in the game as sort of a character. A character. Right. It only appears in the CG cutscenes. All right, that explains it. One other thing I'll say that, that always kind of bugged me uh, in 2010 when this game came out is people would call him Spider Pig and they thought we were making a Simpsons reference all yeah. the time. I know. Even <laughs> though right at the end there, it has the logo from the comic. Wasn't even an episode of, or maybe multiple of uh, the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon. Right? Yeah, and he was like, Peter turned into a pig. Uh, and Loki turned him into a pig or something, I think is what the story was. And I think there may have been, they may have come back to it and actually done the Peter Porker stuff. But um, but yeah, you're the the beginning of like a long line of, of spider hams. He was also a in, long line of spider hams. <laughs> three. A growing line. He was also oh, yes. in, uh, in Superhero Squad Online. He was uh, like, I can't remember if he was playable or like a pet character or something. He was in Marvel Heroes as a pet. And, you know, he had full vocabulary and everything. Uh, I know somewhere in there, uh, Yuri Lowenthal is actually voiced uh, oh, the Spider-Ham. Yeah. Voice of the, the Insomniac Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Spider-Ham's getting around, but you were first. And uh, <laughs> you can always have that claim to, to fame. Yes. We'll call it fame. And, and people can only improve upon my genius performance <laughs> to start with. So there you have it, Internet. The one true voice of Spider-Ham is none other than Kevin Umbrick. And what do you have to say about this channel, One True Voice of Spider-Ham? Like and subscribe. Enough said, kids. Enough said.